27 more days until the Chiefs host the Detroit Lions kick off the 2023 NFL season. 27 more days of best ball drafting. Currently, I've completed 46 best ball drafts on underdog. Tonight, we'll take a look at some of those exposures. And then we're going to enter even more drafts. The Chihuahua 2 dropped last night. You're telling me I can spend $4 with the potential to win $25,000? Sign me up and let's go drafting. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah. And to the Rumbles of Red, thank you all for being here. We are powered by Bite Size Sports. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the Bite Size Sports channel if you will. We are headed to 750 subscribers by the end of the NFL season. We have live multiple show. We have live shows multiple nights a week. Plenty of fun over here on the Bite Size Sports Network. The necessary roughness. Our, our our Tuesday night NFL show. The bounce on Thursday nights. Getting you caught up on all things NBA. Of course, I'm on here on Wednesday nights with my co-host Dan with another damn fantasy podcast. Go check out la- la- this week's episode. We talked about the top 15 wide receivers. So just getting you ready for redraft season. So if you're a fantasy football player looking to get ready for your home draft, uh, go check that out. We did tight ends last week, wide receivers this week. We will be doing running backs next week. And we're here with you every single week now. Every Wednesday night, 8.15 Central. We're also going to be adding in some NFL teams, some bite-sized NFL. Uh, so we'll have some guys recording some 20 to 30-minute videos talking about their favorite teams. I know we've got Vikings, Titans, and Colts already uh, taken up. I think we got some Steelers and some Seahawks. So plenty of NFL action coming your way here on the Bite Size Sports Network. How are we doing tonight? If you're in the chat, thank you so much for being here. Jump on in. Let us know how you're feeling. We'll go through some stuff, and we'll definitely be drafting tonight. Kind of obviously had the hiccups last week. Worked through that a little bit. Actually changed computers tonight. So I've tested everything out. I think we're good to go. Should be a good night of drafting here on Underdog. If you join us on Facebook, thank you. Thank you for being here. But come on over to the YouTube page. Uh, I did put a link out there on my Facebook page. Appreciate you watching, but again, Come to the YouTube page to get a little bit more interaction with the rest of the guests. Um, you guys can chat back and forth. Obviously, you can still comment there on YouTube, on Facebook as well if you want to interact with the show. Are you guys playing a draft with us tonight? You're going to jump in the Chihuahua 2 draft with us tonight? Hopefully, you will. Uh, looking forward to that draft. Looking forward to talking with you all as we go through that. We're also going to jump into a Weekly winners draft tonight. Uh, what we're going to do with the weekly winners draft, we're going to jump into a slow draft. And kind of what we'll end up doing, obviously, we'll just slow draft it over the, the week, uh, two weeks. Hell, I still got a Palm 2 draft going on. I think it's been going on for three weeks now. So uh, just depending on the, the draft room, some of them go a little quicker than others. But uh, they're eight-hour picks, eight-hour drafting windows. And it's a lot of fun. I like it because it gets you get to slow down a little bit, look at exposures, kind of flatten those out if you will. Uh, you get to kind of think through your stacks a little bit longer before making a split second, 30 second decision as we will be doing tonight live on here. But we will be dr- dr- uh, jumping into that weekly winter slow draft and kind of talking about um, a little bit about how how I'll be drafting with that. If you haven't already, sign up for Underdog. Jump into Underdog here. Use my promo code, Trevor Steinbacher, for an up to $100 deposit bonus. Again, promo code, Trevor Steinbacher. Um, a lot of fun on Underdog. You can obviously draft with us tonight, if you will. We only need $4 tonight for the Chihuahua. So you you deposit $10. You get an extra $10. You can go ahead and, and hit five Chihuahuas. Before this thing fills, uh, and now you got a couple best ball teams to, to root for throughout the season. Again, promo code Trevor Steinbacher. Get yourself up to a one hundred dollar deposit match uh, as we are celebrating a best ball summer here. Again, like I said, in the cold open, twenty seven more days, y'all. Isn't that crazy? 
I've been getting some updates tonight. A couple preseason games on, obviously. Um, un- unfortunately, I saw one that Elijah Moore just went to the locker room. So hopefully he's okay. Uh, how about those catches last night? Jordan Addison with the toe drag along the sideline. Tank Dell with the juggling catch ends up pretty much sitting on his behind, uh, catching the ball right in the 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 right at the sideline in the end zone. Uh, so so good stuff here f- from the rookies in preseason already. And we'll take a look at some of my exposures because I definitely have some of these rookies highly highly drafted. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I can see on the back end. About 69%, which is a nice number, about 69% of you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel. We love that you're here. We love that you're watching and interacting with us. Uh, but go ahead and hit that subscribe button, if you will, and uh, help us out as we kind of continue to build and grow the Bite Size Sport Network. All right, let me pull this up. Let's talk about weekly winners. Uh, we're gonna jump into a weekly winners. First of all, I thought weekly winners was gone earlier today, so that was a little bit frustrating. Um, but they weren't. So if you click on NFL, the weekly winners does not show up. But if you go to home, weekly winners does. So what weekly winners is is a different format, a new format to underdog this year. It is a week by week. Payout. So they're best ball in its general form is you draft your team and you go all season long. And then at week 15, you hit the playoffs and, and then you go week by week in the playoffs. Uh, you, usually you have to beat, you know, if you make the playoffs, you have a pot of say 24 teams. You have to be top one or two. Then you make the second round. That's maybe a 200 teams. And then you make the, the, the championship which is usually about four to three to four hundred teams, and you got to get first place out of that one. But in weekly winners, it is straight 18 weeks. They pay out each and every week twenty thousand dollars to first place in one week. So it could be week seven, and you your team blows up, you get the most points out of every single weekly winners best ball team that was drafted that week that year, uh, and you win. $20,000. Uh, it's definitely a, a cool concept, a different concept. I'm excited for it. Again, we're going to jump into a slow draft together. And so if you are here interested in drafting, we will be jumping into a slow draft here before too long. Essentially, all you have to do is click weekly winners and then click the eight hour per pick and then we'll hit enter. But not yet. Uh, first, I kind of want to talk through before we get to drafting. want to want to talk through kind of my plan on the weekly winners for me the way that i'm going to kind of attack weekly winners is different from the tournament format tournament format i'm looking at week 17 who correlates with who if i ever make the finals am i going to give myself a chance to win but in weekly winners you're just hoping to win one week one week pays it off uh hell even if you get top 10 you're getting over two thousand dollars you're probably paying your entry fees for the year right I mean, I would be paying my entry fees for the year and I'd be making a little money. So you're looking to get top 10 in one week. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can attack teams that have the same bye week. I'm throwing out week seven, not going to win week seven. I'm just going to take everybody with the bye week to maximize my opportunities. Uh, You can stack up full teams. You can stack up multiple teams. For me, that's kind of the way I would, would go about it is trying to stack up high octane offenses that I love um, and using interdivisional matchups, right? So finding these multiple teams that have good offenses and trying to stack them as much as possible, knowing they're going to play each other twice a year. Uh, So maybe that's a, maybe that's the chiefs first and the chargers, right? Two really good offenses. You take a, a Austin Eckler in the first round, and then you come back, you get a Patrick Mahomes, you, you sprinkle in a Keenan Allen or maybe a Mike Williams and and you throw on Rashi Rice and Kadarius Tony and some Chiefs pass catchers. And so what you're doing is you're, you're, you're attacking two good offenses, but you also know they play twice a year. 
And so if one of those games goes off for, you know, a 50, 55 point game, you're going to have some fantasy goodness within that game. And if you think about it, when we play DFS, that's what we're looking for, right? You get a 12 game main slate. You're looking for what game is going to go off for 55 points. And you're going to try to stack that game up a little bit. So that's kind of the way I'm approaching weekly winners, thinking through what games or what matchups are going to be happening that are going to happen multiple times between two good offenses. Maybe it's a Philly Dallas, right? Maybe it's a Philly Dallas. Maybe it's a, if you believe in the jets, maybe it's jets and dolphins or, or bills and dolphins, like thinking about these high octane offenses with a lot of volume and guys with that kind of volume, um, you know, you can't really predict health. So you just got to go on people who you think are going to have, you know, good volume all year long and you expect them to be there for 18 weeks. Uh, the other thing is looking at their strength of schedule, right? Look at that strength of schedule a little bit. The, the New Orleans Saints, Dan and I talked about it a little bit on ADP Wednesday, really easy schedule. So that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to stack up the New Orleans Saints every single time, but maybe I add in those running backs a little bit more often because I know, you know, if they got an easier schedule, they'll rely on the run a little bit more. Those kind of things are the things I'm looking at when I'm thinking about weekly winners versus um, just the, the regular tournament style of play. So, uh, if you are here with me to tonight, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into this weekly winners. Uh, let me pull that back up. Let's go ahead and where's my brand? Why did this go? I forgot to put that back up. Let's go ahead. We are going to jump into this uh, again. I've already clicked eight hours per pick, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to this weekly winners. We will do a slow draft for weekly winners. Uh, and there are four more spots. So if you're with me tonight, you want to jump into this one, go ahead and jump into it right now. Uh, try to get this slow draft, weekly winner slow draft um, in. Try to jump in that with me, and let's uh, let's have a little fun slow drafting. We'll talk about it again next week. We'll make sure we get everybody caught up for where we're at, show some of the picks that I've made. have some fun with that so again if you are with us go ahead and jump into this weekly winners it's a fifteen dollar uh turn up uh, a fifteen dollar draft we will do a slow draft and again I'll, I'll make sure that i talk about my team next week lee says you need to draft high ceiling players for the first four rounds then players with high upside the rest of the way yeah, I would agree. I mean, you definitely want to find the ceiling. You want to find some of those cheaper guys that you believe in. You know, is there a um, a Cooper Cup style who's going in the fifth round, right? But he ends up as the number one wide receiver a couple of years back. Or is there somebody out there like that? You definitely want to find that because you get those high ceiling players that they're hitting those ceilings over and over again. Um, it's going to be some fantasy goodness and hopefully give you a chance to uh to get there so this will be my first weekly winners draft I, i've just been I'm doing a lot of research on it i just wasn't ready to do it yet um so this will be my first one so excited about this weekly winners draft go ahead and jump in there if you if you want to draft with us let's talk a little bit about exposures um so i want to talk about exposures with with my best ball portfolio just kind of talk through this just a little bit before we jump into our regular Chihuahua draft here. What guys are you targeting hard? Let me know in the chat. Who are you targeting this year in best ball? Who, who's somebody that you're really going after? Maybe it's your highest exposed player. Maybe it's your highest exposed player. Who are you, who are you chasing this year? Let me know in the chat if you're here with us tonight. I'll pull up my exposures. Uh, not that one. Not that one. All 
All right. Well, that doesn't really help. I'm trying to get this the right one. That'll be fine. We'll do that right there. See if I can move it up a little bit. There we go. Oh, well, I didn't really move up. Anyways, uh, so this is my exposures. I can go here. Let's go to the top. Let's sort this. My highest exposed player is Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, and I've been drafted him since the beginning, honestly. A lot of the times was I would I would snag him and I try to stack him up with uh, Anthony Richardson. So he's my highest exposed player. Definitely trying to slow down on him a little bit. As you see here, um, he's definitely been falling. So the la latest I've picked him as a pick 75 just about a week and a half ago on 731. Uh, I, I used to pick him in the top 50. I used to pick, take him in the top 50. So he has been sliding quite a bit, uh, which kind of is unfortunate because it's not going to give me great closing line value as I've got him, you know, in the 50s quite a bit. Average draft pick at 60, but I think his average draft pick right now is closer to 72, 73. So that's that's hurting a little bit. Keandre Miller up here really went hard on him, you know, trying to trying to get ahead of the game with the Alvin Kamara stuff. Uh, Alvin Kamara only gets suspended three games, so it kind of hurts. But I think Keandre Miller is definitely still going to have a role in this offense. Um, and then you see a couple guys here, Chase Brown, Sky Moore, uh, Mark Andrews, George Kittle at tight end. Both of these guys, I'm loving them. I love where they're being taken. I love, you know, where you can get them. Mark Andrews in the middle of third round. Go back two weeks ago to ADP. I told you all about my Mark Andrews over Travis Kelsey this year, and I love Travis Kelsey. But I, I really, especially in redraft leagues, man, I can't, I, I can't take Travis Kelsey in the first round. I'll take him in. In best ball, plenty of times. Um, let's see, what is my exposure? Yeah, so I'm 11%, so I'm still just over the average, right? The average is 8%. 8% because there's 12 teams in every draft. So 8% 8, 8 of your draft or 8% is your average. One out of 12 drafts essentially is, is you picking the average. So I've got Kelsey just a little bit over that halfway mark. A couple other guys I'm trying to start to slow down on. I talked about Keandre Miller. Devin A-Chain as well. You see him here. I've got him at 15%. Really, the my, my thesis behind A-Chain, like I, I'm still a little bit worried because Dalvin Cook isn't hasn't signed somewhere yet. Right? So I'm, I'm just kind of thinking about slowing down a little bit on him. I clicked the button a lot. Uh, and even – even more than that, I have a lot of Raheem Moser as well. But the one guy I don't have a lot of is Jeff Wilson. Russell, Jeff. So I only have 7% Jeff Wilson, but I'm rolling out A Chain and Raheem Moser 15% of the time. So I kind of want to try to balance that out a little bit. I like all three of these running backs. I, I don't know which running back is going to be the best one in, in Miami. I just don't have that answer. I just don't have that answer. Lee says uh, Hertz is at least 50% of his drafts. Whoa. 50% of the drafts? Let's see here. Where do I have Jalen Hurts? I ha I only have Jalen Hurts two times, 4%. 4%. That's not a fade on Jalen Hurts. That's just me straight up. Yeah, I, I, I'm struggling taking Hertz and Allen because they're going so high now. Oh, Allen's right here behind him. They're going so high. Now, I say that as I have 11% Patrick Mahomes, um, but I've just struggled. Now, a lot of the times I'm taking Patrick Mahomes, I'm really taking him probably in the second round with, uh, with Travis Kelsey. I have got him as late as into the third round, which was really nice in the early June. Uh, but you see here, I'm in 19 to 26 range with, with him, uh, which is about where he continues to go uh, in best ball leagues. But I just am struggling taking Hurts and Allen so, so early. That's what's hard. That's what's hard. Drew says, feels like you can pick up 
a Finn's running back in late in a late round, pick the guy you like and it may hit. I agree with that. Uh, especially talking about some redraft stuff. Just if you want to just take a shot on whichever one you like, take a shot on because you might hit, but the other guys might also be on the waiver wire pretty quickly. Um, so I think that I think somebody's going to be good out of that backfield. I just don't know which one it is yet. I just don't know which one it is yet. Lee also has over 40% AJ Brown, which correlates, right? If you got 40% AJ Brown and 50% Jalen Hurts, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. You're trying to stack up that team. Everybody wants, everybody wants a piece of the Philadelphia Eagles. You see here, I've got about 9%, so I'm right on average with A.J. Brown. Right on average. Uh, who do you guys want to see? You guys, anybody you want to see? Maybe your favorite player. Maybe somebody you don't like, but you hear me talk about a lot. Anybody you want to see uh, where my exposures are with a certain player, let me know in the chat. I'll pull them up real fast. I'll pull them up real fast. I am going to show you, though, we did get this um, – we did get this slow draft kicked off. Um, I do see Lee jumped in here with us, which is awesome. Of course, I have the 11 spot because uh, that's what happens with me. I'm getting these late spots so flipping much. Um, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like it's it's truly it's truly ridiculous how often I'm stuck in the back end of this of the draft. Back into the draft. Uh, a couple guys I'm fading pretty hard. Not, excuse me. A couple guys I need more of. Not fading these guys. I'm not fading him. But I need to find him more often. And that's Stefan Diggs. I'm going through my exposures today, getting ready for tonight's show. And I was just like, holy shit. Guys, I got 4% Stefan Diggs. What am I doing? What am I doing with Stephon Diggs? This guy's going to bury me. I got to get more of him. We got 27 days to get more Stephon Diggs. I need more of him. I do need more Josh Allen. I do need more Jalen Hurts for sure. Um, a couple other guys down here that I kind of like. I kind of like Gabe Davis at his price this year. So I need to, I need to potentially try to snag him a little bit more. Let's see. Anybody else down here that really jumps out to me? Uh, Nick Chubb, I love – I don't care. Like, I love this. I'm not drafting Nick Chubb in the first round. I'm not doing that. So, this this number, 4% will probably actually drop. And I'm okay with that. I am okay fading Nick Chubb. I am okay. Tank Dell season after last night? Let's go, right? Tank Dell season, baby. I got 7% of Tank Dell. Uh, Drew wants to know where I got Alexander Madison. And uh, if you want a lot of Alexander Madison, don't look here because I don't have a lot of. Here he is right here. 4%. 4% Alexander Madison. Um, it look, I, I literally drafted him in the same on the same day, just the other day. <laughs> just the other day I drafted him. Um, on eight one, and yeah, through a slow draft. So, just drafted him just now. I, I just the nice thing is some of these small tournaments like the Chihuahua that we're gonna jump in today. Um, everybody's kind of drafting at the same time. I'm not gonna take Alexander Madison in Best Ball Mania because so many teams have Alexander Madison in the 80s and 90s when Dalvin Cook was still there. That me taking him in the 60s kind of puts me on a disadvantage. Plus, I'm I'm just not a huge believer in the talent of Alexander Madison. I'm not a huge believer in the talent of Alexander Madison. Any other exposures you all want to take a look at before we move on? Take a look at a couple more guys up here. I love this JSN stuff. Zay Flowers and Bateman. Been drafted a lot of Baltimore, just in general. I think I have a lot of, um, I think I have a lot of Lamar Jackson as well. Let me pull up. Yeah, Lamar Jackson is my third highest quarterback as well. So, 
Um, love that. Let's see what I got at running back here. A lot of a lot of late guys, right? Look at all these guys that are late in drafts. So really kind of funneling into some of my favorite late picks. Got some good Christian McCaffrey. I don't feel bad about that. I love the Ramondre Stevenson stuff. Javante Williams is looking better and better every day. Uh, so I like that a lot. James Cook getting a lot of buzz there in Buffalo camp. Supposed to be the guy this year. So he not if he goes ahead and pops off a little bit, going to like that uh, exposure quite a bit. And again, going down to the bottom, you know, I only got one Ken Walker, but I got a ton of Zach Charbonnet, right? So I got 11% Zach Charbonnet, 2% Ken Walker. That doesn't really feel great. Probably should bring up Ken Walker just a little bit. Uh, Travis Etienne's a guy that I, I don't really – I'm not necessarily fading, so I probably should bring him up a little bit more. Um, I'm good with Bijan. He's going way too early for me. You see the time I took him was 10. Overall, that still felt gross. Um, I'd rather take a wide receiver in that range. So I, I feel okay about that one. But this Saquon, Travis Etienne, Ken Walker, even in Miles Sanders to an extent, I probably need a little bit more of those guys. Gabe Davis is a later pick in weekly winners. High upside two weeks a year. Yeah, I agree with this uh, take from Lee. I love Gabe Davis. Overdrafted him last year. Kind of kind of hurts you last year because you would draft him in the fourth round. This year you get him in around seven, eight, somewhere in there. Feels a little bit better price this year. For sure. All right, love talking exposures. Really just like taking the time to look through the exposures a little bit because it's it's just important to know kind of where your portfolio is. I've this is this is the most best ball drafts I've ever uh, done in a year, and so I just want to make sure I'm keeping up with where I'm at with guys. Who am I missing? Like Stephon Diggs, right? Like I, you know, I'm not fading Stephon Diggs. I need to I need to get that exposure up quite a bit and maybe it'll be in this chihuahua draft tonight maybe it'll be in this chihuahua draft tonight hey if you're with us go ahead and join us over on instagram as well bite size sports on ig at bite underscore size sports uh go ahead and join us over there follow give us a follow we do a lot of live events you know we got a lot of racing that goes on nate goes over to uh, the racetrack quite a bit, follows it all around the Midwest and does a lot of live shots there. And we'll put up our YouTube shorts over there. Same thing as we'll do on TikTok, but go ahead and follow us on Instagram at bite underscore size sports. If you're an audio listener, uh, one more time, it's just at bite underscore size sports. Join us over on Instagram. All right, last chance to get your $100 deposit match before we jump in to a best – oh, not a best ball mania, a Chihuahua draft. My boy my boy James was supposed to be joining us tonight, y'all. Um, going to the Eric Church concert, so he had to tell me no. He will be on in two weeks. Next week, uh, you get a double dip of Dan and Trevor – We'll be on ADP talking running backs, and then we'll be right here next Friday night, 8.15 Central Time, ripping a draft. Who knows what kind? It might be a best ball draft, mania draft. It might be a chihuahua. Probably a puppy will be dropping again here before too long. So if I can avoid best ball mania drafts, I will, uh, just because it's not necessarily great EV to be drafting and talking at the same time, uh, but I won't mind doing it if I need to. I do have two best ball mania drafts in so far. So um on well on my way to winning the three million dollars. All right, who's gonna draft with us tonight? Who is drafting with us tonight? We are going to be jumping in to the Chihuahua two. 65% filled, man. These cheap drafts go so fast. They go so fast. I'm gonna have to draft multiple times tonight. I'm just going to have to keep this draft going tonight. Maybe not all on stream, but I got to get some of these chihuahuas in. I got to get some of these chihuahuas in. 25K up top, baby. Let's go.
I was trying to see how many made the final. Probably this 470, honestly. I'll take top 10. I'll take that 2K. I'll take 2K. All right, if you're with us here, let's go ahead and jump into the Chihuahua 2, and let's go ahead and get drafting. Oh, no. Oh, all right, there's, there's room. There's room. Jump in fast. Get in quick if you're going to draft with me. There's a couple more spots. I thought I jumped into an already filled one. That was going to suck. That's the fun about these. Anybody anybody drafting with us here in the chat tonight? Oh. Lee, you didn't get in here? Oh, well. I was hoping you would jump in with us tonight. I did pull the three spot, though, y'all. We finally pulled the three spot. We finally pulled the three spot. Let me show you this. I'm not kidding. When I tell you guys, I pulled this up last week. When I tell you guys, I am pulling, not that one, that one. The 10, 11, 12 spot, 60% of my drafts have been 9 through 12. And to take it even further, 17 of my drafts have been on the 12 spot. 17, which I don't hate the turn. I just hate doing it 17% of my drafts. You got to give me something else. I get the three spot, which I've lived in quite a bit. I can't get the one or two. I would love to have the one or two. Some of us want to draft J Jamar, J Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. Some of us want to draft these guys. Come on, best ball. Come on, underdog. Let me draft these guys. Oh, I think I'm going to go Cooper Cup. Um, he is a guy that I'm a little bit low on right now with some of my stuff. Um, clear, select all. Just double checking. I'm pretty sure Cup's one of the – yeah. I'm going to go Cooper Cup. I, I'm just way lower on him right now than I am with Tyreek Hill. Actually, I'm not. Oh, yeah, that's fine. I, I was going to build Tyreek just because I like building Tyreek teams. But Cooper Cup, look, I talked about him on ADP. He is my third-ranked wide receiver for the season. Um, I do, if, if I'm going off of rank, redraft rankings, I have Cooper Cup and Tyreek Hill both over Christian McCaffrey. Um, I just – I don't really – I'm fine with Christian McCaffrey, but he's had some injuries in, over the last couple of seasons. This, this offense, while it's great, it does have a ton of weapons. And so I just don't know if he's going to continue to pay off a top three price. Whereas Cooper Cup, when he was healthy for 27 straight weeks, man, the guy was absolutely burning everybody and was the easily the number one wide receiver. Uh, health obviously took, uh, you know, put a stop to a season last year. But if he can come back healthy, I know he's got a little, little bit of a um, – hamstring thing going on, but if he can come back healthy this year, I really like Cooper Cup, and I'm not afraid to draft him at the three spot. It's not as a sexy – it's definitely not as sexy, right, than drafting Tua and Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill and company. That's that's a more fun team to draft, but I'm not a, I'm not against drafting a little bit of a, a gross Los Angeles Rams team if that's what it comes down to. If that's what it comes down to, I won't be opposed to it. Just putting some stuff up. Give you guys a little bit of insider baseball. Uh, this is kind of what I do on the back end every time I draft. Uh, I'm just changing over. This is my schedule. So I, I like correlating week 17 opponents. And so what I end up doing is I just have this schedule going uh, I obviously took a Rams player, just highlighting him, and then kind of just making sure I highlight who his opponents would be in week 16 and week 17. Again, it's just like a quick reference for me. Um, I also usually, if I'm not on screen, I'll also go in here and I'll take L.A. Rams, and I'll just start highlighting all of them. Um, and so that way – when it comes to around pick 66 over here in my player pool, 
I'm going to see that th that guy starred and it's going to just jump out to me. I try not to do it as much whenever I am drafting on stream, just because obviously then everybody can see that and have a little bit of a better idea of where I want to go. And if, you know, most hated 13 just happens to be watching, I don't want to get sniped too easily. All right, let's see where we're going here. Doesn't look bad. Looks kind of like a normal draft room, I would say. A lot of badges here in the middle, so that's fun. A couple running backs for Antoine's. I am going to go ahead and take Devonta Smith and just – I mean, we could just hope. Maybe, maybe they'll let Jamar uh, Jalen Hurts fall. We just talked about it. In my exposures. I, I need more Jalen Hurts. We'll see if it actually happens. But they're not going to have a stacking partner, right? So if I take Devontae Smith, at least I have the stacking partner for um, Jalen Hurts. But again, it doesn't. Doesn't necessarily matter all the time in these rooms. Sometimes people just take the quarterbacks just to take them. Uh, they don't necessarily stack them like Swamp Donkey did here with Mahomes. Now, Mahomes is a little different. There's a lot of guys late you can stack with Mahomes. Jalen Hurts, who does go here at the 301 spot, so I don't get him. He doesn't fall back. There's not a lot of guys to stack him with after Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. Just not a lot of guys there to stack him with. Same thing with – same thing with Josh Allen. I could take Josh Allen here. Not a lot of guys to stack him with later on. Yeah, you can get a Gabe Davis, Dalton Kincaid, whatever, but I want to stack him with Steph Diggs, and it's not always going to happen. That's where I'd like to go. I've been taking a lot of Mark Andrews, but usually a little later on, so I'm going to go ahead and take Ramondre. I love Ramondre this season. <laughs> it didn't click the first time. I love Ramondre this season. I loved him last year. Um it doesn't sound like, although the Patriots continue to bring people in, it doesn't really sound like they're they're necessarily bringing somebody in like him. They might bring in like a Zeke, maybe a Fournette type of player, but um, I, these guys are dust. I'm not worried about Ramondre if they bring in him. Now, if they bring in Dalvin Cook, I'm going to be quite worried, right? So hopefully that doesn't happen. I'll go ahead and take Ramondre. Um Take that 11% Ramondre and move it up a little bit uh, with him. All right, so update my thing here. Got a little New England, a little Philadelphia. What? Who are you guys fading? Who are you fading hard? Let me know in the chat. Are there certain players that you're just like, nope, not doing it? Not doing it. Don't want these guys. Don't want to touch them this year. Maybe you draft them here and there, but. Who's somebody in, in, in that you guys are fading in the chat here? Let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear it because I've got my guys that I'm fading. I just want to see if it's, you know, similar to some of the guys you guys are fading. New England, New England correlates with, with Buffalo. So I am definitely going to go ahead and put Gabe Davis in here. I told you guys I wanted a little bit more Gabe Davis, remember? Pick 69, so I could probably snag him. Whew. I could, I, I'm gonna have to risk it. I'm at right at 70. Does he fall? Does he fall? That would be the question. Real quick to catch up, um, the audio listeners, I do go Cooper Cup at 103 to start it off, Devontae Smith in the second round. Wrap around to Ramondre Stevenson. Right after I go, Mark Andrews, Josh Allen, Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs in the middle of the third. Why is he not falling? Josh Jacobs, a guy that, what do I have? One Josh Jacobs? Maybe? If I even have one, I'll be surprised. I have zero Josh Jacobs, y'all. Zero. I had zero Josh Jacobs last year. I'm not surprised by it. I, I hate Josh Jacobs. Because he he he's on a, a offense that I really truly believe it is within the range of outcomes that they just crash this year, seriously just crash and burn uh, with Jimmy G at the helm. It's not it's not 
the Kyle Shanahan offense that makes every quarterback look good anymore. Devontae Adams wants to run down the field. Can Jimmy G hit him? I doubt it. I doubt it. Look at some of these other starts. Leroy out of the five hole goes Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, Josh Allen. Elevane out of the four hole right after me going Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, Mark Andrews. So no wide receivers through three rounds. Interesting start to say the least. Um, the only really most hated 13 out of the seven spot, A.J. Brown, Devontae Adams, D.K. Metcalf, Terry McLaurin, just going zero RB hard in the paint. I love to see it. And then Antoine, five out of the six hole. Travis Kelsey, Tony Pollard, Josh Jacobs, another zero RB or zero running. I got to get my life together. Zero wide receivers through the first three rounds. There he goes, Christian Watson. We're a couple picks away uh, on the board right now. Travis Etienne, Joe Mixon, DeAndre Hopkins, DJ Moore, Joe Burrow, Justin Fields is up there. I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do the same thing I did just a moment ago with Philadelphia, right? So let's see what Elevin does here. Ah, son of a bitch. Man. Do I just take – I mean, Travis Etienne falling six spots in ADP. Do I just take the value here? I so badly want to snipe that SOB on – all right, I'm just going to take Tra Travis Etienne. Going down – I mean, he's falling six spots. I don't really like taking two running backs this early. Um, in fact, if I look at my running back um, – exposures. I've got 40% of my teams are anchor RB teams. 35% of them is zero RB teams. Anchor RT, RB is a team that I draft one running back in the first or second round. And I don't draft another one until round six or seven at the earliest. Zero RBs is I just draft zero RBs in the first five rounds. Um, and then I have a couple hyper fragile, which is where I'm drafting three in the first six rounds. And then only drafting four. So you're really just trying to hit on those three. But anyways, 70% of my 75% of my drafts are zero or one running back in the first six, five to six rounds. I'm already taking two. So this is definitely out of my uh wheelhouse here a little bit. I'll talk about what I was gonna do with Justin Fields momentarily. I'm not gonna end up taking him here now. Buffalo. I don't really care for – I think I'm going to take Hawk. I don't have a lot of TJ Hawkinson. It gives me a quarterback option later on and Kirk Cousins, so I'm going to go ahead and take uh, just uh, – uh, geez, TJ Hawkinson. And then I'm going to go ahead and talk about my plan for – well, what was going to be my plan for DJ Moore – I was going to do exactly what Elevane does here. And it's fine. I, I almost want to take Justin Fields out of spite, but he takes DJ Moore knowing that B stats has Jamar Chase and T Higgins. So he's taking Joe Burrow. Everybody knows that. The whole draft knows he's taking Joe Burrow. He's probably not double tapping quarterback. And Sergeant Sweeney in the one hole had already taken Jalen Hurts. So taking another quarterback that high just doesn't seem right. So you take a DJ Moore, you play this, you know, the the turn, and then you get Justin Fields and fall right back to you to the 504. It was a perfect play by him. It just ticked me off because that's what I wanted to do. Um, and he ends up doing it and executing it to perfection. Um, it just doesn't do me any good to to, you know, angry snipe him on that in that situation. It's just not, not necessarily going to, to help me out. And probably it's not going to help him out. I do get a guy that I don't have a lot of exposure to 
in TJ Hawkinson. Um, just a tight end that I, I need a little bit more of anyway, so I don't mind taking him right there. All right, so I've got Ramondre Stevenson, Travis Etienne, Cooper Cup, Devontae Smith, TJ Hawkinson, a 2-2-1 two, two, build through five rounds. A very, very odd build. I'm, I'm seriously usually sitting at a, a you know, a 1-1-3, one, one, a 1-4, one, a 1-3-1, one, one, something like that. Sounds like I'm talking, you know, giving out basketball defensive plays at this point, but that's usually where I'm at. I'm rarely at a 2-2-1. Two, two, so just a, a new a new way to play right now for me. And it's it's good. It's it's good to expand my my exposure a little bit. It's good to expand, you know, who am I taking and when I'm taking. I mean, Travis Etienne at the back end of the fourth round is a little interesting. The only time I took him before was at pick 37. So I I did get him nine spots further than I'm you you know I've taken him before. So it's great value. It's hard to pass up great value. All right, now we are on the Gabe Davis watch here as Antoine 5 goes. And I assume, son of a gun, I'm going to get sniped again. Leroy Duche is going to take Gabe Davis, right? I didn't realize he took Josh Allen. He takes Josh Allen in the third. He's definitely taking Gabe Davis here. I mean, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? And there goes Gabe Davis, as expected. Michael Pittman goes, which is great. That gives me um, a good feeling. I don't have to take Michael Pittman. I will go ahead and take Jordan Addison to take with TJ Hawkinson. Set me up for a little Kirk little Kirk stack here, a little double stack with Kirky. Uh, Minnesota plays the Green Bay Packers in week – 17 so i am gonna try, just kind of i'll just put a couple out here i love aj Dillon, so let's see if i can't get a little aj Dillon. i wouldn't mind a little dobbs but we'll see about aj Dillon first so what i'll end up doing is i'll take kirk cousins if he's still there he's at 112 adp so what I'm already doing is I'm trying to figure out when I'm going to take him. So I'm going to look at taking him at 99. Should he still be there? Oh, double tap in the quarterbacks out of the one spot. All right, we are in round seven. I've already taken two running backs. There's no way I'm taking a running back here. I say that, but there's not really any. I like Dotson. I'm actually going to take Quentin Johnston. Just another guy I want a little bit more exposure to. Mike Williams gets hurt a lot. Keen Allen coming off of a season where he did not stay healthy the entire time. Um, I got 9% Quentin Johnson. I don't hate it, but I'll take a little bit more here. Um, doesn't, doesn't necessarily help me try to find a quarterback later on, but it does help me increase those exposures. So far, I have zero correlation. <laughs> zero week 17 correlation. So that's fun. These are my next two picks. If I can get these two guys to fall, I'll take A.J. Dillon. Uh, and, uh, another reason I don't want to take a wide or a running back, excuse me, here in the seventh. Although these guys are, are probably better than A.J. Dillon, they're being drafted higher than A.J. Dillon, I already kind of have an idea in my head that I want to bring back for Minnesota. A.J. Dillon's really the best player left in, for, for the Green Bay Packers because Jones and Watson obviously are already gone. I'm not necessarily wanting to play around with the Luke Musgraves of the world right now. So let me take an A.J. Dillon. So if I'm going to take him in round eight, I don't want to take a running back in round seven and be stuck with four running backs through eight rounds. Hell no. That ain't me. I ain't doing that. So I I, I don't take one there. I'll pick up a little Quentin Johnson action. Action. Jahan Dotson's been falling quite a bit. Why? Why is Dotson falling? He's got Eric Bieniemy, man. He's the best, best offensive coordinator of the league. 
It's sarcasm for all you new folks here. Although I'm a Chiefs fan, you will not see me banging down the door for Eric Bieniemy. I wanted him to get a head coaching gig just to get out of Kansas City, man. Let him go. Let him go. Uh, I talked a lot about my zero RB stuff. Just look at round six and seven. So I'll, I'll cover everything else up. This is why I've, I have so many zero RB teams. Because if you don't take any running backs in the first five rounds, you can get some good players here. David Montgomery, he's in the Jamal Williams role in Detroit. Jamal Williams led the league in touchdowns last year. DeAndre Swift, RB1 in Philadelphia, right? Cam Akers could have a good year. Alexander Madison, the number one running back in Minnesota, we talked about a little earlier. J.K. Dobbins worries me a little bit because he's still not healthy. Rashad White, could he take a step forward in his second year in Tampa Bay? Javante Williams, on track to play preseason game one. Played in the first preseason game. You got to love that for a guy coming off an ACL. James Cook, Isaiah Pacheco, number one running backs on the two best offenses in the league. The, the Philadelphia Eagles are right there with those two teams. And so there's a lot of running backs in this range. A lot of running backs. And if I can, if, if I roll double, you know, excuse me, if I roll zero RB, through five rounds, if I if I can get out of – if I get an elite quarterback, three wide receivers and an elite tight end or maybe just four wide receivers, I'll double tap, triple tap running back in this six to eight range. Don't mind that. All right, A.J. Dillon is still on the board here. Oh, man. So is Alvin Kamara. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I've been taking Alvin Kamara a lot over the last couple of days. Um, I'm going to take A.J. Dillon. Go ahead and get that stack with Minnesota. Sometimes it matters more about the makeup and the build of your team than it does your own player takes. I would have loved Alvin Kamara that far past ADP. But, again, I knew that I wanted to get Dillon on here as my bring back. Um, I have a pretty good amount of – of AJ Dillon, 17%. Just add to that. I don't mind just hammering him. Uh, less Alvin Kamara, but I, I don't. If Alvin Kamara would have made sense, um, I probably would have snagged him there. But I'm going to take Kirk Cousins here at 112. Yes, I'm going to take Kirk Cousins over Anthony Richardson. Not because I like Kirk Cousins more than Anthony Richardson. I do not like him more than Anthony Richardson. He just makes sense, right? I took Hawkinson, and then um, Gabe Davis gets picked right before I go, which opens up Jordan Addison for me. So I've already got the Minnesota double stack. I've already got the Green Bay bring back. It's in a dome. It's going to be a fun game at the end of the season. So I, I like the game. I like the offenses that are involved in this game. So give me a little bit of Minnesota Green Bay for week 17 correlation. Even if I – I mean, I, I only it's, – it's 13 picks. That's what I reached for, right? I would – research says 18 is kind of the breaking point. You don't want to reach more than 18 picks to complete a stack or you start having negative EV. Essentially, you're really putting yourself – in a bind if you go too too far down the road. Um, and if you need to go 18 picks, then you just try to wait it out. Let, let them fall back to you. Um, Kirk Cousins, only 13 picks. Don't necessarily want to – I didn't really want to risk him falling back to me at 118. So I'll go ahead and take him. Even though the Justin Jefferson guy is behind me coming back, it's – I probably could have pushed it because nobody else has a Minnesota guy. But, man, some of these rooms right now, it just it feels gross because people will just take a quarterback just to take them. They don't care who else ha they have on their team. For example, look at the five spot here. Antoine, 
Travis Kelsey, Tony Pollard, Josh Jacobs, Christian Watson, Justin Herbert, Marquise Brown, Darren Waller, Brandon Cooks, and Tony Gibson. Why did you take Justin Herbert? This guy's got a badge. You kind of think he's been doing this a long time. Why Why did he take any? He has no chargers. Why does he take Justin Herbert? I get it. You want to take good players. I'm not saying you don't want to take Justin Herbert. But in this scenario, it does nothing for his team. The research shows that you want to stack. And you want to double stack. Whether you're playing DFS or you're playing best ball, you want to stack and double stack your teams. Because if Justin Herbert's throwing touchdowns and he's having the greatest season of his career and if he's the reason you're going to get out of this 12-man draft, once you get to week 15, you're going to be playing all these guys that have Justin Herbert with Keenan Allen, with Mike Williams, with Quentin Johnston. So now your team with Justin Herbert is going up against all these. Justin Herbert, week 15, goes off for 35 fantasy points, four passing touchdowns, just phenomenal game. Guess what? Your team is dead. And your team is dead because everybody else that you're playing against in the playoffs, they have the pass catchers. So – the, the guy that Justin Herbert throws the ball, the touchdown to twice is on these other teams. So now it's Josh, uh, Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen. Those teams are the ones moving forward, not the naked Justin Herbert teams. It doesn't, it, it needs to make sense with your team, guys. You can't just, I mean, you can't, you can do whatever you want. You can draft whoever you want. But it doesn't make sense to just draft a guy like Justin. You want to just draft a guy like Josh Allen or Jalen Hurts or Anthony Richardson because you believe in the legs? Okay. You can sell me on that a little bit. I love all three of those guys. I love their style of play. Everybody knows I love a good running quarterback. So you can sell me on those at least. Justin Herbert don't run. Justin Herbert does not run. All right, let's see. Let's uh, get back in it here. See a little Devin A. Chain. Buffalo, Carolina, Arizona. I think I'm going to go tight end. I think I'm going to go Friar Muth and just be done at tight end. I, I, I don't love my wide receivers, and I'm really not going to love them after I take Damian Harris next. But maybe I'll just maybe I'll just go all in on my tight on my wide receivers late here. But I'm going to go Pat Friar Muth. Does it feel phenomenal? Um, does give me one more out for quarterbacks later on and Kenny Pickett. I just don't I don't I don't believe in Nico Collins. I think Juju is dust. I think New England, Mac Jones, like I don't I don't love that. Alan Lazard. I mean, is he really gonna be great in New York? I just don't love this. I don't love this range of wide receivers right now. It's a weird pocket. Any of these three? Uh, probably not Odell. But if Tyler Boyd, Jameson Williams, or Romeo Dobbs would have came, I would I would have loved one of those guys. But I don't really love the rest of these guys. Um, Devin A. Chain, I'm just trying to trying to you know lighten up a little bit on him. Um, let's see. This is a weird pocket of draft right now. None of the quarterbacks make sense. Yeah, I, I think Friar Ruth was the play. At least I can just be done. I am going to take Damian Harris. I'm taking Damian Harris as he 
uh, correlates with the Chargers in Week 16. He correlates with New England and Ramondre Stevenson in Week 17. I guess I could have taken, I could have taken Juju because I already had Ramondre Stevenson. That would have opened up a, a chance to have like just a backdoor Mac Jones stack. But I, I don't really love that offense outside of Ramondre, so it doesn't really feel great to do that. Um, so I'm not going to do that. All right, let's get caught up here. I do have a little Buffalo. Hmm. See what I want to do next. So just to catch everybody up, I've got Kirk Cousins at quarterback, Ramondre Stevenson, Travis Etienne, AJ Dillon, Damian Harris, four running backs already. Uh, I'll definitely be fine, you know, finishing this at five running backs. I'm not going to go much more than that. Um, at wide receiver, I have Cooper Cup, Devontae Smith, Jordan Addison, Addison, and Quentin Johnston, two rookie wide receivers there. TJ Hawkinson and Pat Fryermuth. So I'm done at tight end, and I'm going to take one more running back, and I've got, what, six more picks, seven more picks left? i got seven picks left. I'll take one quarterback, maybe two, and one running back. Everything else is going to be wide receiver from here on out. I really got to hammer this home, which kind of sucks because most often I've got five wide receivers in the first nine rounds. Get five. I mean, it definitely does drop off here. If you look at just these top 100 wide receivers, Tony has fallen all the way to 100 at this point. Say after Michael Thomas, though, right? Darnell Mooney, Romeo Dobbs, Jamison Williams, Odell Beckham Jr., Tyler Boyd. A lot of just question marks. Tyler Boyd's the third wide receiver on his team. Just not Odell Beckham's the third wide receiver on his team. Jameson Williams out for six weeks. It just doesn't feel great that after after 100 picks. So I really try to, to push five to six wide receivers in the first nine rounds. Just didn't happen today. Just didn't happen today. This DJ Moore thing kind of threw me off a little bit. Could have taken a guy like Christian Kirk. Definitely try to try to get a, a Trevor Lawrence stack uh, with Christian Kirk potentially. Definitely could have taken JSN. I just have so much JSN that it didn't feel right to take him at 49, man. 49 is crazy. Forty nine. So I mean, the highest I've ever drafted JSN is fifty three, and that was back in June. So he's really getting steamed up. I took him as late as sixty nine. <laughs> That's nice. Late as sixty nine back in July, middle of July. So JSN going. I mean, he had him way, way ahead of ADP, right? Forty nine. Who took him? Sergeant Sweeney. No, he didn't really. He only took him nine spots ahead of ADP, so that's really not that much. It just felt like it was going to be a lot. Rashi Rice goes here to Swamp Donkey. Man, he's been flying up draft boards, y'all. Getting, getting really, really, really good camp reports out of Kansas City for Rashi Rice. Anytime somebody's snagging Patrick Mahomes, they are trying to snag a guy like Rice. Let's see what happens here with Elavian. Is that French? Is that Elavian? E L A V I E N. Elavian. Uh, this is an easy pick for me. It makes more sense. Makes the most sense. Van Jefferson, double stack my Rams. Bring in Matt Stafford into the Q box. I'm gonna go ahead and snag him 
13 spots ahead of ADP. Just be done. I mean, I don't know. Fuck. Where's Higby at? This guy's already got two quarterbacks. Ham and cheesy, baby. Ham and cheesy. He's already got two quarterbacks. Richardson, Geno Smith. I've already reached for a quarterback to finalize the stack. I'm not doing it. I love this tight end range, though, by the way. We already took Frymuth, so I'm not touching tight end. I love... This tight end range, Chig, Everett, Cole Komet, Sam Laporta. It's a fun tight end range. It really is. I might just take Matt Stafford because I hate all these wide receivers. All right, I'm taking Alec Pierce. I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it with Matt Stafford and see what happens here. Um, I'm taking Alec Pierce. He he doesn't really correlate anywhere, but I, I don't really have a lot of him. I have so much Michael Pittman. I feel like I need to diversify a little bit there in Indianapolis. Um, I could have taken a Hodgins. That's just so far above ADP. KJ Osborne definitely fits my Vikings build, but I've already got a double stack. I could have triple stacked him. Research shows you really start to become get negative EV if you go more than five players on a team. So four players, that's not bad. I could have triple stacked him. It would have made the most sense for the build, but I I, I don't really love KJ Osborne already. I feel like I've got two of the three best pass catchers on Minnesota. Obviously, Justin Jefferson being the clear cut number one. Do I really need the fourth pass catcher to make this team? It doesn't. I don't feel like I do. So, uh, give me a chance with a guy like Alec Pierce again. Had I not taken Pat Fryermuth already, I definitely would have hammered wide receiver or a tight end right there. Um, it just. This has been a weird draft. It's multiple times wide receivers have gone before it's my turn, and, and it kind of just leaves me with nothing at the position. It's really left me with nothing at the position. Even when I took Kirk Cousins, I already knew I was going to take him. Kadarius Tony, who's falling. I have a ton of Kadarius Tony, but I was freaking drafting him in like the 60s. Michael Thomas or the ghost of Michael Thomas. Like, again, I'm already past most of the good wide receivers at that point. Yeah, it's been a tough one for wide receivers. It's definitely been a tough one for wide receivers. We're, we're kind of on the Matt Stafford watch. We're down to – just a few more picks as we turn the corner to 14. Every one of these guys have two quarterbacks, I think. Swamp Donkey has two. Wizard has two. I mean, if these motherfuckers take a third quarterback, I'm going to riot, man. I'm going to absolutely riot. All of these guys have two quarterbacks. I might have made the right play here, y'all. I might have made the right play. Come on, Stafford. What are we doing taking Kareem Hunt at 158? The guy gets a couple freaking visits, and we're going to draft him at 158? What are we doing? This guy is just drafting a dead-ass team. Sean G27, if you're here in the chat tonight, your team is dead. That team sucks. Kareem Hunt at 150. What are you doing? 
The guy doesn't even have a team. Holy cow, y'all. 33 picks ahead of ADP. Earlier I told you 18 picks was the threshold. How about 33 picks ahead of ADP? What are we doing? What are we doing? Okay, at the turn, I started to think about this. If Stafford falls to me, do I push it even more? At the turn, at 101, Sergeant Sweeney has Jalen Hurts and B Stats has Joe Burrow. Weird, weird drafts. I love drafting at like 11 o'clock at night, guys. On a Friday night, on a Friday night, 11 o'clock at night, it gets so weird on these drafts, man. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. I am definitely taking Matt Stafford. I am not pushing it any further. Let's go. Give me those Rammies, baby. Cooper Cup, come back to life, my friend. Number one wide receiver on average for 27 straight weeks until he finally gets hurt in week 10 of last year. 27 straight. The guy was hot to start the year last year. It's on this year. I got a 2-4-6-2 build going so far through 14 rounds. Kirk Cousins, Matt Stafford, I am on the clock. Just kidding. I, I think I'm just going to go ahead and finish off here. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to take this. Um, I'm going to bring Isaiah Hodgins back on my Ram stack, actually. That's what I'm going to do. Almost took another running back like an idiot. Bring Isaiah Hodgins back on my Ram stack. Love that. I might even get another Giants running back. I bet I can get another one. Or a Giants wide receiver here. Let's see if I can get maybe a Paris Campbell. I don't know. I'll click up a couple of these guys. One dollar. I don't really want one dollar. I don't really want to want Ron Dolly. Tyler, thanks for the like on Facebook, my friend, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I wish they told us the likes on YouTube. You know what I mean? Like just, hey, so-and-so liked it. I, I would love to be able to shout you all out just for liking it, just for liking the, 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 the show. You know, maybe it shows me a new subscriber like, like, like TikTok does now, right? Like if you're live on TikTok, it straight up tells you when somebody subscribes. I would love to see that on YouTube. Let me know when somebody subscribed. That would be so awesome. Just be able to shout you all out. You know, thank you in person real fast. That would be that would be phenomenal. I wish they did that. Um, but that's not what we do right now. That's not what they got going on. So no shout outs for subscribing. But if you have subscribed, I absolutely do appreciate that. Uh, well, on, we're on the way to 7, uh, 750. Where are we at right now? Where are we at right now, YouTube? I'd love to know. Oh, man. Uh, I'm using my wife's computer tonight. I'm about to subscribe to Vice Side Sports on her YouTube. What's she doing? Come on now. She literally never watches YouTube. You know what she's subscribed to right now? The Decemberists. What the hell is that? And the other only other subscription she has is the Rumbles of Red, my old – YouTube channel that I was doing all my shows on. What a what a lovely wife she is. Now she's subscribed to Bite Size Sports. She is the 545th subscriber. Give it up for my wife Haley. She is subscribed to Bite Size Sports. The 545th subscriber. Wow. Wow. What an absolute gem she is. And she doesn't even know it. She'll go back, listen to the audio. You know, she's an audio listener. She'll be like, what the hell are you talking about? What? 
All right, what are we going to do here? We got a 2472 rolling in here. We're going to need to get at least one more running back. And I love the running backs that are on the board right now. Um, got quite a bit of them. Quite a bit of all of them, actually. And most of them correlate. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, Gus Edwards went. Gus was the one I kind of like. I'm a little worried about the J.K. Dobbins thing. Are you guys worried about J.K. Dobbins? Because I'm a little worried about the J.K. Dobbins thing. So it's kind of got me a little bit more frisky with getting Gus Edwards on my teams for best ball. Now, for redraft, you know, you're just going to try to wait it out as long as possible. Hopefully you get more uh, information before your team actually drafts. But that's where I'm at right now. So both Zamir White and Chuba, they both correlate really well on this team. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take Chuba just, just purely off of exposure. I have quite a bit of Zamir White, and I've been drafting Zamir White quite a bit recently. Um, so I'm at 11% White, and again, a lot of that is – most recent, I'm only at 7% Hubbard. So uh, bring that white percentage down just a little bit. Bring Hubbard's percentage up just a little bit. Kind of flatten that out. Both of them correlated just fine. Um, I like Zamir Why I've been drafting him a lot lately just because I could. The Josh Jacobs thing kind of worries me. Obviously, I'm not taking Josh Jacobs. If I have zero Josh Jacobs, right, like how do I – how do I – how do I offset that fade? It's a hard fade. Well, it takes Zamir White. Maybe it's maybe it's his team now, right? So can I be right on both occasions? For sure. Do, does Zamir White have to be good for me to be right? Absolutely not. Josh Jacobs could still be a good fade while Zamir Wright is not good at all, right? Right? Um. Damn it. I wanted Thornton. I just had to check real quick to get um, – <laughs> I was checking real quick to see if Houston correlated at all, and I ran out of time, which is fine. Um, I threw Tank Dell in there, man. It's Tank Dell season, y'all. You can't, you can't watch that game last night and then not take Tank Dell 14 spots ahead of ADP. It's – I will say this. Uh, I talked a lot about ADP this this – this draft Sp specifically around, you know, not overreaching just to get stacks and whatnot. And what I will say is when we get to rounds 15, 16, 17, I right or wrong. I don't care anymore. Like I, I just, I try not to care as much. Like I, I'm going to try to get different. I'm going to try to get weird with my stacks or weird with my players that I'm taking because these are all players that are, you know, at the end of the draft board for a reason, and we don't really know what's going on. So we might as well take some swings and see what happens, right? We don't really care. We don't really know. So we're going to just roll with the punches, try to just switch up as much as possible. I'm definitely going another wide receiver here. I just – I don't love these wide receivers. Cooper Cup I absolutely love. Devontae Smith I love. Jordan Addison I'm super, super excited about. Quentin Johnston um, I think is going to have a little bit of volume, a little bit of opportunity there in L.A. this year. Van Jefferson is supposed to be taking a step forward, but, I mean, we've been hearing that for a couple of years now. Alec Pierce, Isaiah Hodgins in a – both of those guys are really in a range of like who the hell knows. And then I just take Tank Dell. So um, just, you know, not the best wide receiver room I've ever drafted. So that kind of worries me. So I'm going to just take one more no-name wide receiver and, and, and add him to the list, you know. Puka Nakal could earn the th number three spot. I could take him in L.A. 
I mean, honestly, he would work. He does make sense. He does make sense on this team. A Greg Dortz. Freaking Greg Dortz. Visca, man. I love Visca. I used to be a huge fan of Visca. LaVisca Chenault. Nah, I mean, he's kind of dead to me. He's kind of dead to me. Trey Tucker took a little bit of him in rookie drafts this year. We'll see. I got a couple more picks here to see what happens before we get out of here. Um, I do appreciate you all being in here tonight. This is much better than last week. A lot of a lot cleaner than last week. Um, and we'll be getting right back into it. So, Sunday week one, you know, I said 27 days till – Week one starts with the Chiefs and Lions 28 days until we talk about week one main slate DFS. We'll be talking FanDuel as always every single week. Same cadence, 815 on a Friday night. We're going to have some beers. We're going to talk some DFS. It's a lot of fun. And we'll be here every Friday. So you, you know exactly where to go on Friday night. You put your kids to bed. You grab, grab a beverage. If you're in the Midwest, you go out back to the to patio and you enjoy yourself and you watch a little Rumbles of Red and we'll, we'll talk DFS. We'll make you a better DFS player and we'll win some money as we go. Going to be a great, great season this year. Super pumped for it. Um, hoping to hit some of those binks a little bit more often this year. A little bit more often. We hit a few last year. Um, I remember sweating out a nice – $1,200 payday that ended up being, I, I think it ended up, I ended up in third with like $400. And I once, like, I ended up getting like $600 that night, um, which was fun. It was great. $1,200 would have been a hell of a lot better. <laughs> but it was a nice sweat that night. So hopefully we get a couple more of those sweats going on. Uh, definitely will be here on Friday nights. Bite Size Sports is looking at trying to do some stuff. Um, hopefully we'll see how it goes. We're waiting on the contract with NFL, um, for the viewing party. So you can watch, we could go watch live with you. We, if it on I I can't remember what it's called now, but if we do that, I'm going to go tear. I'm going to go, do I go Puka or Terrace Marshall or Cedric Tillman? Let's go Puka. Let's let's go ahead and triple stack this bad boy up. Why not? Get all the rookie running backs or wide receivers. Um, but as I was saying, uh, I don't remember what the watching show, what what the watching internet website is now. But essentially, we could watch the football game with you. We could be live talking through it, having a lot of fun. I would love to do that, especially like on a Thursday night. Get my DFS lineups in. Maybe do like a 30-minute cram before kickoff and then turn over to that. Be live all night long, having some beers, talking about football. That would be a lot of fun. So uh, we'll see if we can get that rolling. A lot of it has to do with that website and whether or not they can agree with the NFL. Um, they got the NBA going. They got the MLB going, but they don't have NFL going right now. So um, if we can do that, hopefully – uh, that would that would bring some viewers. That would be a lot of fun there. All right, let's recap this team real quick, and we will get out of here. Kirk Cousins and Matt Stafford at quarterback, Ramondre Stevenson, Travis Etienne, A.J. Dillon, Damian Harris, and Chuba Hubbard at the running back position. Cooper Cup, Devontae Smith, Jordan Addison, Quinton Johnston, Van Jefferson, Alec Pierce, Isaiah Hodges, Tank, Dell and Puka Naka at wide receiver and at tight end TJ Hawkinson and Pat Fryermuth. Like I said, I mean it's, it does definitely doesn't feel the greatest, but there are some pockets that I really like. I did I, I really like the beginning of this draft. Cooper Cup, Devontae Smith, Ramondre Stevenson, and then Travis Etienne falling uh, six or seven spots to to pick forty six. I liked that a lot. Um, I, I, I wanted to take DJ, DJ Moore there, 
and get Justin Fields. It didn't work out, so I go to De- uh, to TJ Hawkinson. Jordan Addison I liked. Quentin Johnston I liked. A.J. Dillon I was ready for. Um, it kind of pushed me into reaching for Kirk Cousins. And that's when it kind of went to hell in a handbasket when I had to take Pat Fryermuth in round 10 as all the wide receivers were off the board that I liked in that range. So uh, that's all good, though. Way better than last week. A lot smoother this week, right? Didn't have all the issues with not being able to get into the draft. Hopefully next week, if you didn't draft with us this week, you'll join me 8-15 next week. Dan and I will be drafting. I am praying, y'all. I have zero Derrick Henry. I am praying to get a, a maybe the one or two spot. Because if I get the one or two spot, obviously we're not taking Derrick Henry at one or two. And maybe Derrick Henry doesn't fall back to the back end of the second round. And then I don't have to take Derrick Henry, right? Then I don't have to take Derrick Henry. That's my plan. I'm trying to avoid Derrick Henry when drafting with Dan and then James the week after. But you know when I bring on guests, I let them kind of take the wheel. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully you all will join me the next couple Fridays with the guests. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Again, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends to subscribe to the Bite Size Sports channel. It's a great time. A lot of great hosts across the week. Uh, You really should check out as many shows as possible. Find your niche. See what you like the best. Check out my season-long fantasy football podcast, another damn fantasy podcast powered by Bite Size Sports, every Wednesday night, 8.15 Central, right here on the Bite Size Sport Network, or also on Apple and Spotify as well. Follow me on Facebook at The Rumbles of Red, on Twitter at Trevor S underscore FF. Good luck in your future best ball drafts, and may the money be in your favor.